Hello and welcome to Away World Outreach Sermon. We are so glad you're here because we believe that the Word of God has the power to impact and transform your life. So let's get ready now for this week's Word. How many people love the Lord in here? Let me hear you. Hey Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are so happy for this opportunity to once again stand and to celebrate you in your 14th anniversary. Let's give it up for Pastor Marco Garcia, his wife. Amen. Pastor Robert, for all the leadership of this church. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You are the recipients of this ministry. You are the benefits of this ministry. You ought to give God praise for him. Amen. We're going to jump right into the word of God tonight. The Lord is here. How many people know that the Lord is here? Amen. This wonderful praise team has done an excellent job of ushering us into the presence of the Lord. How many people sense his presence here? This, is, is, this will be the third message I've brought today and uh, the fifth message I've done this weekend and I still feel like God is speaking. It's something about being around people who really love God and are after God and, and trying to chase after him that makes my baby leap, <laughs> makes my gift operate. Amen? And so I want to deliver to you very briefly what God has delivered to me. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Matthew, the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5. One verse, verse six. I appreciate all of you that stopped by the product table on Friday and, and got my materials. I appreciate you so much for supporting my ministry and what God has put in me and hope it blesses you and your life and your family, amen? The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter five, verse eight. Say amen when you have it. And it reads this way. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied <laughs> I'm going to read it one more time blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what righteousness for righteousness for they shall be satisfied and I'd like to use for a simple subject tonight obey your thirst yeah, Father, bless your word tonight. Your presence is here and we sense you. We don't want to rush past this moment, God, without bowing down and lowering ourselves and asking that you step up in us. Be glorified tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. In the early 90s, Sprite came up with a marketing plan for their product. And the tagline for this marketing campaign was, Obey Your Thirst. Obey your thirst. Yeah. First things first, obey your thirst. That's what they said. Cool little slogan, kind of catchy. And with it, Sprite promises to satisfy you. <sighs> Refresh you. If you've been working or traveling or playing sports or some kind of activity that allowed you to exert yourself to the point that you needed to be satisfied with something that would replenish that feeling again. They said, obey your thirst, get a Sprite. <laughs> you can almost taste it, can't you? Bubbles everywhere, dry throat, got you a Sprite. <sighs> I can run again. From a spiritual standpoint, however, Nothing quenches a parched soul like the water of God's presence. Throughout the scriptures from the book of Revelations where we see God moving on the face, I'm sorry, book of Genesis where we see the presence of God moving on the face of the waters all the way to the book of Revelations where we see the water, the river of life flowing from the throne of the Lamb of God Water has always become a symbol of not only God's purification and his renewal, 
but also of God's presence and God's renewal. Over and over again, as God uses water as the metaphor for his presence, his renewal, his refreshing, the thing that human beings need in order to continue to survive. God likens himself to water that refreshes you. Everybody's thirsty for something. Today, we are run amok with people who are driven, though, by unbridled passions and insatiable appetites. The Bible says this in 1 John 2, 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Everywhere we see people driven by a thirst for something, driven by a lust for power, a lust for wealth, a lust for sex, a lust for attention, a lust for fame, a lust for notoriety. And these people are willing to do anything they can just to attain what they think will satisfy their soul. We see people as they try to climb the corporate ladder, thinking that if I get more power, I'll be satisfied. We see people willing to do anything, to cheat, to lie, to do anything they can to satisfy the thirsting that is in their soul. And, and I emphasize the word think. Because once they attain the thing that they thought they wanted so bad, they find out that their soul is still parched. And before you start pointing at the world and their ungodly behavior, I want to suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, but the issue also exists in the church. As we see people who are driven by an insatiable desire for power, for prestige, you want to be seen, you want to be noticed, you want somebody to call your name, you want somebody to pay attention to you, that we're not driven by a desire to know Jesus or to point people to Jesus, they're driven by a desire to know me, know my name, know my gifts. Be acquainted with my talents. Forget about Jesus. I want, you to, I want you to be acquainted with what I can do. And we'll see people who are willing, who are driven by that desire to be noticed so strongly that they're willing to do anything to be recognized. They'll falsify their, their, their documents if they need to. They will proclaim credentials that they don't have simply because they want to be recognized. They will take people's ideas and make it their own simply because they want to be recognized. They want to position themselves and posture themselves in such a way because they think if I get that place, if I get that position, if I get that seat, that I'll finally be satisfied. <sighs> Jeremiah 2.13 says this. He says, my people have committed two great sins, two great sins. One, they have forsaken me, church people. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water. They forsook me. They, they walked away from me. They, they came to church. They, 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 they once were in the Bible. They, they once were excited about prayer. They, they once were excited about the worship and getting in my presence. But somehow they've forsaken me and begin to be driven by other things. Recognition and people. Recognition is an intoxicating Thing to happen, to be recognized, to be seen, to be noticed. But they've forsaken me. They, they've forsaken the living water, and now they're after this false water, this thing that doesn't satisfy. That's one. And the second thing is, if that wasn't bad enough, is they have hewn out cisterns. <laughs> the Bible said they dug out their own cisterns broken cisterns that cannot hold water. 
A cistern is simply a reservoir. It, it was a receptacle that they built in the ground that was used to catch the rainwater. And as the rainwater fell into the cistern, it would hold the water, and they could use the water later to cook or to bathe or to drink. But if the water was broken, if the cistern was broken, if the receptacle, the reservoir was broken, it was impossible for them to hold the water that was coming into the reservoir. And so it is with some people who are driven by anything other than God. They think that they have all these things, but the moment the water comes in and promises to satisfy, it's leaking. It's leaking. And some of you are frustrated because you don't understand why you got the things that you want, but you don't want the things that you have. Come on and talk to me. I'm going to get in your business tonight. You wanted him so bad. You was willing to do anything. You was willing to go to the furthest mountain, the highest mountain, the lowest valley to have him. Then you got him and you're not satisfied. I do know what it's like to get what you want, but don't want what you have. You found that as you climbed the corporate ladder and finally got the corner office that you're still not satisfied. You found that once you got all the friends you thought you wanted and now you're in the clique and the club and the crew that once you got in there you're lonelier than you were before you got in the crew. You got leaky pots. That's why no matter how much happiness comes into your life, you can't hold on to it. No matter how many good things happen to you, you can't hold on to it. No matter how much somebody loves you, they can't love you enough because you got leaky pots. You're a leaky pot. No matter how much somebody pours into you, no matter how much somebody loves on you, no matter how much somebody supports you, it's never enough. You're still driven by this thirst that I can't quench. And you, my friend, have forsaken the living water and you dug, you put effort into building things that don't satisfy. Woo. How many years have we spent putting time and effort into things and people and opportunities that once you got them, you're still not satisfied. No wonder you still can't sleep at night, although you have the house that you want. And I'm not against having things, but I am against having things have you. No wonder you drive the car that you want, but you're still not satisfied. No wonder you got the job that you want, but you're still not satisfied. And you walk around saying, God, I got the job I want, got the woman I want, got the house I want, got the job I want, in the neighborhood I want, and I'm still not satisfied. It's because your cistern is broken. broken. When the, world over, when the reservoir was broken, every time they stuck their hand or their bucket down in there, there was nothing to grab. It was leaking out as soon as they put it in. And some of you don't realize that you're spending life and time and energy on things that are slipping away from you even as you speak. You say, I don't have time for prayer. I got to get to work because I'm going to be satisfied at work. So you neglected your prayer time so you could hurry up to work and got to work and you're still. Hundreds of years after Jeremiah wrote this, we still have a tendency to use self-made systems that leave us empty. Church service after church service and still empty. I've never seen an age like this before in my life where we have more church, more access to word. We got the internet, Instagram. We got all kinds of systems for getting the word of God. We got more word and less power. We got more access to Bibles and commentaries and scriptures and yet we don't know God anymore. Why? Because we're leaking. That's why in a service like this that's really high and the worship of God is in his house and it's raining in this place, it only lasts from now to the parking lot. Yeah, I'm going to get all in your business. Yeah, I know your pot is leaking because as soon as you walked out the door, you cut somebody out in the parking lot. 
That's a leaky saint. You can always tell the leaky saints. They can't hold on to no joy. They can't hold on to no peace. As soon as we leave worship service, you're calling the prayer, the prayer partner to say, pray for me. I don't have any peace. Where? This place is wet. This place is saturated with the presence of God. You should walk out of here wet with God's presence. But instead of walking out with God's presence, soaking you, I'm dry. Can I talk? You're getting more church, but you're getting less victory. You're getting more Bible, but you're getting less peace. You get more prayer, but you get less joy because your pots are leaking. Look at you. Look at somebody and say, you're leaking. You're leaking. You're leaking. God intended for us when we come to church that we be soaked with the power of God, that we be filled with the power of God, that we be overwhelmed with the power of God. And that power follows us home to our families and follows us home to our community and to our job. But the power can't get to them because it's leaking out of you. Because we're driven with an insatiable desire, with the thinking, the thought that we'd be satisfied with anything other than the presence of God. When was the last time that you heard somebody say, I'm thirsty for God? Somebody said, I'm thirsty for a bigger house. I'm thirsty for a bigger car. I'm thirsty for a bigger position. But when was the last time you heard somebody say, I'm just thirsty for God? I just want more of God in my life. I just want more of his presence in my life. I just want more than I can handle. I want to be overwhelmed. I want to be taken over. I want to be shaken down to my core. I want to fall on my face and cry before, before the Lord, before anybody even gives a worship service. I want to praise God before I get here. I don't want to wait till the worship service starts. I want to be worshiping God in my car on my way here crying because I'm in the presence of the Lord. And when I walk in, I just jump in the flow because I've already been worshiping before I got here. I can tell you're leaking. I can tell you're leaking because every time we have a worship service, we got to get you jump started like an old battery. The worship leader have to almost do a backflip. The musicians almost running around here with their tongue hanging out. Somebody got to get up and say, come on, come on, come on. Because you haven't had a worship saturating experience at home on your own. Listen, I didn't wait till I got here to start worshiping God. I started praising God when I got up this morning. When I got up this morning, my eyes opened up. My first thought was, thank you, Jesus. When I got in the car to come over here, I was already saying, thank you, Jesus. And when I came into the worship service, all I did was get in the flow. Look at somebody say, get in the flow. But leaky, leaky Christians... And so we have to pump you up. I can tell the leaky saints because the leaky saints don't get a word till they come to church. They don't have a relationship with the word of God on their own. They have to be spoon fed constantly. If somebody's not here preaching, they don't get a meal. God help you if they don't have church on the 4th of July. Somebody gonna have a conniption. Oh my God, my God. What are we going to do? What, what? <laughs> Nothing's holding in you. Nothing's sticking in you. But God wants you to be thirsty for him. God is attracted to thirsty people. In fact, what God does is he puts down in you a thirst and a desire for him. For the things of God. He puts something so strong down in you that no man can replace this. You ain't had no lover like Jesus. I know he's fine and everything all like that. 
You know, he's fine as wine, big, broad soldiers, got more money than Bill Gates, but I'm telling you, he don't touch you like Jesus. Can't nobody love you like Jesus. Can't nobody hold you like Jesus. Can't nobody wipe your tears like Jesus. Don't nobody understand your groanings and your moanings like Jesus. So while you're trying to be satisfied by a man, God's trying to fill you up. Oh, you're not going to talk to me. You're not going to talk to me. Somebody say, Lord, if I just had a woman, if I just had a man, I'd be satisfied. What do you mean? I'm telling you, God is jealous. God is jealous. As we chase after everything, hoping that it's satisfied, he sits back looking at you saying, she'll be back. That honeymoon going to last about 30 days and she'll be back. She'll be back praying, Lord Jesus, I just need you in my life. This man, I don't know what the world... God attracted the thirsty people. He walk into a situation like this with some thirsty people. God will begin to move in this place. God will begin to move so strongly we don't even have to have preaching yet before the power begins to flow. That while the worship is going on, healing will begin to flow. That before we get up and start teaching the word of God, that demons will start running out of here when you get some thirsty people. I wish I had about 3,000 thirsty people in this room that would open your mouth and shout and say, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I don't want a new car. I don't want a new house. I don't want a new wife. I don't want a new home. I just want more of you. Lift your hands and say, Lord, more of you. I need more. Let me say this. Let me move to my move quickly. Thirsty people. Thirsty people always look for the right thing to quench their thirst. Thirsty people. See, everybody's thirsty for something. It's how we satisfy it that makes the difference. Everybody's thirsty. You heard what I said? I said everybody's thirsty for something. But it's how we satisfy it that makes the difference between sin or disobedience. God has designed you with a hole in your soul that nothing else will fill but him. He put down in you an insatiable desire that nothing can satisfy. That's why you've been waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning don't know why. 3 o'clock in the morning, God waking you up saying, Lord, I got to go to work. But he wake you up so you can spend some time with him. You used to sit up and watch reality TV all night, Netflix and all that all night. But now, all of a sudden, you want to get in the Word and just start. Because God has put a desire down in you for him. Oh, for a, for a whole church full of people who rush into this place looking for him. Second thing. Thirsty people don't stop searching for a drink until their thirst is quenched. I mean really thirsty people. They have something called tenacity. They don't go around and say after five minutes, well, after five minutes, if I ain't found no water, I'm just going to die. <laughs> like somebody out in the desert, I'm dry. I need some water. If I don't find no water in five minutes, I'm going to quit. Here's where I take issue with the saints. We are more tenacious about things that don't satisfy than we are about God himself. If you wanted a man, couldn't nobody tell you nothing. If you wanted a house, couldn't nobody deter you. 
If you wanted the latest car, the latest job, the latest pair of shoes, couldn't nobody stop you. You would work three jobs. You would do whatever you got to do. You would search all over town. God help you at Christmas time. You would search all over time trying to find a sale on the thing that you want. You put all that energy, tenacity. I'm not coming home till I get back with what I want. All that tenacity you have. And God says, why don't you have that same tenacity when it comes to me? You let every little thing discourage you. Well, it's raining outside. I guess I ain't going to church. <laughs> A little bit of rain. Oh, I got to stay home. Bedside Baptist. Somebody got on your nerves at church and you don't come to church for five weeks. And God said, you're going to let a man, you're going to let somebody with an attitude keep you from serving me? Somebody said, well, there's hypocrites in the church, and I don't want to be there. It was hypocrites at the club, but you still went every week. Every, I wish you would sit there on me. Every week you were standing right out there in that line waiting to get in, and you knew that there was hypocrites and liars and drunks, and you were right in there dancing with them. Come on, somebody. Standing out there in the cold, in the rain, somebody got to get my prayer, got to get my dance in, child. <laughs> I'm just having fun. This is my third service. Y'all got to excuse me. I <laughs> but somehow when it comes to God, it's an inconvenience. <laughs> if pastor don't preach on Sunday, I'm not coming. Oops. If God don't give me what I want when I ask him to do it, I'm not coming to church. If he don't fix the situation when I want him to fix the situation, then I'm just not going to serve him. But God needs some people that say, Lord, even if you don't fix it. Never mind, I'm going home. I'm talking about people that love God. If you don't fix it right now, if you don't fix it next week, if you don't fix it next month, if I got to wait a year, I'll still be here lifting my hands and serving you and worshiping you. I'm tenacious. Paul said, I follow after him that I may apprehend him who has apprehended me. I'm tenacious about this. Paul was a killer of the Christians. He didn't let nothing stop him. And when God converted him, he took that same energy and tenacity and used it for Jesus. How is it that you can have all that energy and all that power and all that fire when you wasn't even saved and now you're in church and I'm tired. I'm tired. I ain't got time for this. You ain't got time for what? You had time to chase the dope man. You had time to run to the liquor store. You had time to chase that woman. You wouldn't let her go. You was almost a stalker. But now when it come to God, you... Oh. With your stalking self, you stalk everybody you met. But now that you found Jesus, the lover of your soul, you don't want to... I wish I had somebody who would stalk Jesus. Where you at, Jesus? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? I know you're around here somewhere. I came in this church looking for Jesus. Excuse me. Excuse me. I think he's in the closet. I think he's on the corner. Where are my Jesus stalkers at in here? Where are my God chasers at in here? Where are the folks that are not ashamed? Pastor Marco, I believe God is jealous. See, he was merciful with you when he saw you chasing stuff that didn't even satisfy. You were like the woman at the well, had five husbands and a situation when he rolled up on you. And all those situations you had didn't satisfy. But Jesus said, the water that I'll give you, you'll never thirst again. Oh, I wish I had some folks that would say, Lord, I'm going to come after you. You know what we need, sis? We need some God chasers. 
That's what we need in church. We need some God chasers. Some folk that are so dogged and determined to serve God with everything in them. They don't let no rumor stop them. They don't let no backbiter stop them. They don't let no liar stop them. You're not going to roll your eyes at me and keep me from going to church. I don't care if I lose my job, I'm still going to praise it. If I lose my house, oh, you ain't got that kind of faith. If I lose my house, he's still worth it. If they talk about me, I'm still going to give him praise. Where my God chasers at? Oh, you ain't no God chaser. Where my God chasers at? That don't care what nobody think about you and don't care what nobody say about you. I... Slap you people and say, I'm a God chaser. I'm a God chaser. I'm a God chaser. I know I get on your nerves and you say it don't take all that. You ain't got to holler like that. You ain't got to pray like that. You ain't got to praise like that. But I'm a God chaser. I came in this room seeking him out. I came here like a stalker. I'm going to find him. You can sit there if you want to. But I came to get God. I'm not leaving till I touch him. I'm not leaving till I touch the hem of his garment. I'm not leaving till he lays his hands on me. I'm not leaving till I get some glory. Where my God chasers at? Where my God? Identify yourself. Where the God chasers at? Since God chasers are rude, they don't have no decorum. They don't have no, no care for, for, for what is right and order and structure. They just break out in the praise right in the middle of the offering. They don't even care. They just come on in clapping and giving God glory. They don't even wait for the word to come before they start leaping on their feet because I'm a God chaser. Oh, slap people and say, I'm a God chaser. God chasers. While everybody else is putting out their best bait, putting on the red dress and the high heels, trying to get caught. Somebody here said, I'm going to get caught by Jesus. They don't understand you. They don't understand why you're after him like that. They don't understand why you've been in service all weekend and you're back out here on a Sunday night. Don't you got to work tomorrow? Look at somebody say, I'm a God chaser. I'm going to get the last drop. I'm going to get the last. I'm going to hang on for the last praise, the last dance, the last service. Last thing, thirsty people go where the water is. On that last great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and said, if anybody is thirsty, let him come. Not let him sit. Let him come. Let him get up from where he is, inconvenience himself, and move to where the water is. Come. We don't have that kind of tenacity. If God doesn't make it convenient and bring it right to your doorstep, you don't want to have it. But how many thirsty people here say, I'm going to come. I'm going to come. I'm coming. Let him that is thirsty come. Let him that is tired of chasing stuff that don't satisfy come. Let him who is tired of trying stuff that don't work come. Let him who is tired of being used and abused come. Thirsty people don't even wait to be called. <laughs> it ain't even your time. Just rude about it. But they're coming because I'm thirsty. Lift your hands if you're thirsty in here. Uh huh. All the thirsty people. God is pouring out His Spirit all over this room. And the only people that's wet are people that's thirsty. The only people that's going to get this are people that really want this. They hunger and they thirst after it. Like a man pants after water. Lord, I pant after thee. I'm like a deer panting for water. My tongue is hanging out of my mouth. I'm tired of going around and around the same circles. I need you to touch my life and touch my family. God! Come on, lift those hands right where you are and open your mouth 
and open your mouth. That's what God wants right there. That's what he wants to see. Some thirsty people. Oh my God. Been in church all day and I'm tired, but I'm still thirsty. Been around and around the well, but I'm still thirsty. Oh my God, we've been here 14 years. 14 years of miracles and outpourings, but I still want more. 14 years of God bringing us through, but I still want more. 14 years, God's been doing amazing things, but I still want more. I can't hear you. Open your mouth. There is an endless supply of glory that is in God that God wants you to tap into. There's a supply of glory right now that is so strong that it'll make you give up alcohol. There is a glory so strong that it'll make you get up here and not even wait for the altar call. I'm not even waiting till the benediction or the altar call. I'm coming right now. I need this water. I need this water on my ministry. I need it on my family. I need it in my finances. I need it in my mind. No wonder I can't sleep at night. I'm tired of chasing stuff. I've been to the club, danced all night, sweated out my clothes, and I'm still not satisfied. I drank till I couldn't wake up in the morning, and I'm still not satisfied. Come! I'll give you water that you'll never be dissatisfied. I'll give you water that you'll never be thirsty again. Lift your hands all around this altar. The power of God is moving all around this altar. Thirsty people chasing after God. Thirsty people lifting their hands to God. Look. Come on. I dare you to draw on the Holy Spirit. Come on. I dare you to pull on God right here. Come on. I dare you to draw down what you need. I dare you to give up the stuff that ain't working and go for some stuff that is working. Yeah, the power of God, the power of God is all over this altar. Stronger than anything you ever smoked. Stronger than anything you ever drank. Stronger than anybody ever touched it. God! He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Open your mouth and let that river flow out of you right now. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. I know it's getting on your nerves, but these are the thirsty people. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Satisfy me, Lord. Satisfy me, Lord. Satisfy me, Lord, so I'm not running the streets all night trying to find somebody to love me. Satisfy me, Lord. Till I'm not run, I'm spending all my money and I'm spending my youth and I'm spending my energy and I'm not getting anywhere. Lord, touch. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Right there. That's what he wants. Right there. That's what he wants. A deep abiding presence of God falling on you right now. Out of your belly, man. Your belly. That's it, man. That's it, man of God. That's what he wants. Let the tears flow. Let the tears come down. You've been thirsty for a long time. Here it is. You ain't had nothing like this. Uh-huh. You ain't had, uh-huh. You ain't had nothing like this coming. Coming. Yeah, satisfied. Yeah, yeah. Don't sit back and be cool. God put that thirst down in you to come after him. Obey your thirst. Obey your thirst. Come after him. You've been chasing other stuff. Now it's time to come after God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Your thirst brought you up here. I didn't bring you up here. Your thirst brought you up here. Something down on the inside that said I'm dry and I'm very dry and I need a touch from God. My body is tired, but I'm still thirsty. Ah! Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. 
That's what I want. I've had people touch me, but now I need God to touch me. Touch me, Lord. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. I'm tired of wasting money. I'm tired of wasting time. Touch. in the book of Revelation that he heard a sound in heaven that sounded like the voice of many waters. It sounded like the crashing, the sound of many waters. It was the sound of the saints who were collectively lifting up their praise and opening up their mouth and allowing the deep water of God to flow out of them. And it sounded like an ocean. I wish we would raise a praise in here until it sounds like a mighty ocean. Let that water out. Let that water out. I said let that water out. If you got a praise way down on the inside and you just got to get it out, open your mouth and give it right here. Come on, sound man, give me some more sound. Come on and let that praise out right here. Yes! Somebody by the hand that's next to tell a neighbor. I don't mean to get on your nerves, but God's been too good to me to be quiet about it. I got a praise on the inside and I gotta get it out. I came over y'all here to get it out. Now go ahead and release that praise. Oh, glory, release that praise. Come here, sis, right here. Right here in the green. Come here. Come here. Come here, take this home with you. Somebody give God glory. God. Yeah, yeah, right there. Right there, get it out. Get it out. I gotta get this. Get this water out. Get this water out. Get this water. Get this. 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 Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Somebody's walking away from a man they can't see. For a man they can't see. Somebody's walking away from some alcohol right now. Somebody's walking away from an addiction right now. Somebody's walking away from a situation right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's you. It's you. It's you. Get this, man. Get this. Get this. Get this. Get this. Lift your hand and give him glory. Wow, what a powerful word. Would you let me pray with you real quick? Father God, I just thank you so much for my friend on the other side of this screen. And I thank you, God, first of all, that they're here, that they made their way here to the page. And we thank you, God, that this message impacted their life today. I ask you, Father God, that this word would go into their heart and touch those, those deep places, God, that, that need to be stirred for purpose and for change and for breakthrough and for healing, God, and that you would just provide all the necessary steps to get them to the next season that you have for them in their life, God. I ask you, Father, that you would just bless them, that you would encourage them, that you would bring them peace and joy in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you. If this video made an impact in your life like I know it did, would you consider making an impact in someone else's life? How you could do that is by heading over to thewayworldoutreach.org slash donate today. Also, while you're here, why don't you take a look at one of our other great videos that we have on the page. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.